Hi everybody, I wanted to do a quick video today about the red shoes that I posted yesterday. As you guys can probably tell, I'm sort of on a beyond the Tuesday, Friday usual video kick, which is good because I want to put up as many videos as I can for you guys. But I thought it might be a good idea, now that I'm posting performance videos that are current as well as the old ones, which I'm going to keep doing by the way, um, I thought it might be good for every time I post one the next day to like either talk about it or analyze it or give you guys some info about it so it's more than just here's me dancing, enjoy, and you guys actually get something out of it. We can talk about artistry, we can we can talk about technique, I can analyze little things for you, um, and also just kind of give you some extra info that you might not already know. So I'm so glad you enjoyed the red shoes. The comments are incredible. Thank you so much. Yes, it's a really, really amazing ballet. Um, Don. Donald Garver, who choreographed it, is a genius, and get ready to have your mind completely blown. He's not a ballet choreographer. He's a theater choreographer. Um, actually, he's, now he's a ballet choreographer, um, um, and you'll see a lot more things coming from him in the future. He and I are going to start collaborating and doing more, um, but he, I think the reason it works so well is that he is a theater choreographer, and he goes by the story first, so when we started doing this, we really mapped out the story what we wanted to tell, what points we wanted, and then we sort of went from there. Um, and and choreograph. It's funny. The first day we were in the studio, we choreographed like almost the end where I kind of go crazy first, and then sort of worked backwards and built up to it. Um, he's just a genius. You're gonna see a lot more of his stuff. Hire him. Everything. You will not be disappointed. He's not a ballet choreographer until now. Now he's a ballet choreographer, but it just kind of blew my mind. So it's just really, really incredible. He's amazing. He did, um, we met doing To Dance. He was a To Dance choreographer. Um, and I was like, you're the perfect person for this. Because this is, again, it's about the story. And we go by the fairy tale, not the film. Um, it's hard to do the film with one person. <laughs> the story of the film, and the story of the film is entirely different than the story of the fairy tale. Um, they do like the ballet, like the 20 minute ballet that's in the movie is the fairy tale and that's why it's called the red shoes um but a lot of people think of the the fairy tale the red shoes as a love triangle but it's not and the, the fairy tale is kind of gruesome um she gets the shoes and she was very very proud very very vain which is the first part of the ballet as you saw and then um after a while she realizes that it's almost like a punishment i believe it's a punishment from god that she realizes for a while she can't take them off and the shoes have their own idea and they basically I think the different versions they either dance her to death which is kind of what we did or the actual fairy tale is that she eventually cuts her feet off and the shoes still keep going. I mean it's very very gruesome we obviously couldn't do that um, but we took the version that they dance her to death and Dawn was brilliant a lot of you were commenting that you can see when the shoes take over how you can really really see it and the way we did it and this is kind of an artistry thing um is that when we're doing the first part of the ballet when i'm in control everything is straight up and down i'm right on top of the count i'm it, it's very very straight upper body um, and then when you have to do something where you're out of control obviously you still have to be in control otherwise you lose your balance but everything was very off balance nothing was ever straight up and down and he was just brilliant to kind of have my legs always leading me somewhere instead of me leading somewhere my legs were leading um, and like the bit when the first the, the shoes first become enchanted that's a really good tip for artistry for you guys if you're doing a ballet that you have to be in control and something like Sleeping Beauty for example you want to make sure that you're very very lifted up through the waist your body's ahead of your legs you really want to, to look as though you're in control, even if you feel like, what am I doing? Help me, I'm going to die. You really want to think of, you know, everything is you're in control. You always want to be slightly ahead of the music, just a hair, so you're right on top of the beat. And if you have to do something like, for example, the end of Swan Lake, which is a little more wild, a little more out of control, the upper body has to kind of follow, and you have to kind of just barely make the beat, um, instead of being ahead and on top of it, be slightly behind the beat, and have your upper body, you know, this is like I'm out of control, this is when I'm in control. So that's just a little artistry tip, if you ever have to do something like this, where you have to show the difference, 
it's a lot of it is your upper body. Because the legs, if you look, the legs are doing the steps. You know, an arabesque is an arabesque, a pirouette is a pirouette, but it's the upper body that tells the story. So are you in control? Are you, you know, or are you out of control? The legs obviously have to still be straight, up and down, lifting in the hips so you stay on balance. But what is your upper body doing? Your upper body tells a story. Um, we filmed it at Mark Morris Dance Center, which is in Brooklyn, um, the day before Thanksgiving of this year. So that was November 25th, and it was five days before I filmed the other one that you guys saw in the Central Park, the Love Fool video. It was five days before that one. Um, and as I said in the Q&A video yesterday, I've lost quite a bit of weight since then. Um, although it came out very, very well, I'm very pleased. And some people have been curious as to why I'm not wearing red ribbons. Because every other version of red shoes, you see she wears red ribbons. It cuts off your line and makes your legs look shorter. So we had the chance to make this our own. We had the chance to kind of come up with our own look to it. And I decided not to wear red ribbons because it really makes your legs look short and stubby, basically. Um, and without the red ribbons, it's definitely far away also, it looks like, like red ballet flats. I mean, it looks like a red pair of shoes instead of a red pair of point shoes, which is kind we were, again, trying to go for the more realistic, even though it's a fairy tale, have it be still a regular pair of shoes. Um, and so that's why I didn't wear red ribbons. That was an absolutely conscious choice because it just doesn't do anything for, for anybody's legs. Um, I mean, even the best, people who have the best legs in the world, you see them in red ribbons and red point shoes and it just cuts off the line. So I thought I'm not doing that. Um, the dress, some of you are at, love the dress, some of you don't like the dress. We love the skirt. We we're going to change the top for the Kennedy Center because it just was too big and baggy and didn't fit well. Um, but we had a lot of costume issues right before we did this, so it was what I could find. And I think the skirt is beautiful and it, you know, it has a beautiful flow to it, but the top will be different at the Kennedy Center. Um, a lot of you love the Giselle hair moment. That is something that we don't do on the stage either, um, just because it's too, your hair needs to be really, really tight and we don't have enough time. But for the magic of film, you can take it out and it looks like it just came out with no problem. When in fact we cut, take all the hair out, hold the hair in your hand, okay, roll, and then make it look like it comes out. But anyway, um, so that does not happen on the stage. And we did, you know, the thing is I do perform this absolutely live. I did it in Cleveland. I'm doing it at the Kennedy Center. So there are a couple different changes that we made for the video that are not in the stage version and, and vice versa so that it could be a different experience when you're watching it on stage rather than in the video. And the reason we filmed it like this is because back when I, I first danced it in Cleveland with Ballet in the City, um, there was performance footage of it, but as you can see, Dawn's brilliant choreography has so many nuances that the footage wasn't good and you really couldn't see the nuances, so the only way to do it was to make it look like a Hitchcock film. I mean, really. So that's why it's been long and that's why we waited to do it, but I think the result is just really special. Our videographer also edited it and her name is Lindell. Again, I have everybody's links below that video. Um, she was in To Dance with me. The lighting designer was our lighting designer in To Dance. We kind of all met this summer and when we decided to do this it just seemed logical that we all kept <laughs> working together. But um, just to take away from this video for you guys, when you have to show you're in control, again remember it's the upper body, as well as when you're out of control. Because you again the legs have to be in control at all times. But how you move your upper body and your facial expressions, that's how you're going to show whether or not you're in control or not, and yet you're still on balance. Um, and then a lot of it comes from your choreographer. If he happens to be a genius like this one, it works. So if you enjoy these kind of analyzing videos, and I may even, if you want me to go back and do the other ones like when I was young, I can analyze those to death and say, oh, this was right and this was wrong and see how I'm doing this. Because again, I want you guys to always benefit from everything I post. Um, so if you like these kind of analyze the, the performance videos, um, let me know and I can do even more in depth. Maybe I can do a voiceover of one and kind of analyze it as we go. So whatever you, whatever you guys want, just let me know. But I wanted to kind of let you in on all the magic and, and just I'm really, really proud of this one. Um, I'm proud of the other one that I did with Joey. Um, and we just kind of wanted to see how these videos would be on here. You guys like them, you didn't. And the fact that you, you guys do love them means we're just going to continue to do them. And we have some amazing creative ideas that I can't wait to do. 
um, and put on here for you guys, all right? If you missed the red shoes, obviously, it's over there. You can click it to watch. Thank you so much. I love you all, and I'll see you tomorrow.